ChatGPT is the top performing doctor in a new study conducted on five AI language models. It scored 98% on the same 50 questions that doctors have to answer to get a medical license, beating competitors Claude, Gemini, Grok, and Hugging Chat slash Llama. Joining us more right now with more on this is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's former FDA commissioner, also a CNBC contributor. And Dr. Gottlieb, I have to say, I learned a lot reading through your article that's now posted on this. Um, I think the thing I learned that shocked me the most is that doctors only have to get a 60% to basically get a passing grade on this. Yeah, and the average score is a 75%, and all of these large language models pass the, uh, the medical licensing exam. So what we did was we fed 50 questions from the USMLE um, step three medical licensing exam. So this is the third in a three-part series of exams that doctors take. Typically, you'll take this step three while you're in your first year of residency, and it's the final step before getting your medical license. So we set, fed 50 questions from this exam to the top five large language models. We were expecting more separation, uh, and quite frankly, I wasn't expecting the models to do as well as they did. The reason why we wanted to do this was a lot of consumers and physicians are using these large language models to answer medical questions. And there really wasn't good evidence out there on which ones were better. There were some studies looking at individual models, mostly chat GPT, but no one had compared across the different models. And the results were really striking to me, the fact that chat GPT got a near perfect score. And the other thing that chat GPT was able to do was contextualize its responses. So it didn't just give you the answer, but it explained why it chose a particular answer and then why it didn't choose other answers. So it was very descriptive and gave you a lot of good information. I have been Googling my medical symptoms for years and scaring the heck out of myself, yeah. convincing myself I have everything wrong with me under the sun. Are you telling me that ChatGPT is going to be better at that, or is it going to be more of the same because I am clearly um, just somebody who worries way too much about things? Yeah, look, I think the large language models are, are certainly better than using um, open source, you know, search techniques like Google. Uh, they provide a richer information, more descriptive information, and a lot of them will also provide references as well, or references certainly if you ask for them. Um, and in some of the language models, we didn't look at perplexity specifically, but that will um, certainly provide links to sources of information. But ChatGPT did the same thing. Um, Llama did that. Uh, Grok was doing that. So they were providing links back to the, the source information so you were able to go back and look at a richer data set. What, I mean, how is that any different, though? Because I, I think I'm pretty good at Googling this stuff, where I will look back to find, you know, hard journals that come from uh, scientific places that I really trust. How are they better at this than, than what Google already does? If, if I'm a, like a practice user of Google who knows to which references I really want to keep. Yeah, look, I think if you use the, if you just use general search, um, you have to put the, the information together for yourself. One of the things you could do with these large English models, and I've done it, is you can put in a, a series of symptoms and laboratory results and ask it to sort of risk adjust what the probable etiologies are. And the models mm -hmm. will do that, and they do a reasonably good job at that. I, I've put in lab results, um, extensive lab results that were quite perplexing. And the models were able to give a pretty um, good differential diagnosis. And so that's how you, I think you can use the models in a more effective way than okay. just using, you know, I mean, that, open that's, searching. That's a lot different than a, a basic consumer kind of using these things and trying to figure it out. You're a doctor. You were putting the, in lab results and real things, not just symptoms. Oh, I have a headache. I must have a tumor. I, and you were putting in lab results <laughs> and saying, why would you get these things? Is this a tool that doctors are going to be able to use to come up with more complex um, uh, settings than they are more complex diagnoses than they would be maybe without it? Yeah, and a broader differential diagnosis. The key to medicine is coming up with a list of what the probable causes are given a certain set of symptoms. And these models can do a very good job at that. And, you know, I've put in a lot of hypothetical scenarios to test these models. They're pretty good. Um, one of the things, though, you have to be mindful of is that the models are probably instructed not to give medical advice. And so if it, if it smells too much like you're asking for personal medical advice and putting in your personal symptoms, sometimes they'll balk and tell you to go see a doctor. So one way to, to sort of engineer around that is to tell the model that you're, this is a hypothetical patient on a medical exam, and then that get, <laughs> seems to get around their, their default settings. And so it's I something you need to be mindful of when you use too. these things.
Uh, but, uh, but are you saying that this is a better tool for consumers, or you think that this is really going to be more useful for medical professionals who already have a broad understanding, which maybe gets them to a rare diagnosis that they wouldn't have thought of otherwise? Yeah, I think both. I think physicians are and can use this to generate a differential diagnosis. I wouldn't use it to generate a treatment plan that I'm going to follow. But I think in terms of coming up with what possible etiologies are, these could be very good. I think for consumers, they're a better tool, frankly, than searching, because if you're not if you don't have a base of medical knowledge and you're not adept at searching for these things, sometimes you can end up down a rabbit hole um, looking for the wrong information, reading the wrong information. And I think yeah, like, these models are much Reddit. less likely if you, <laughs> if you put it in a good compilation of, of what, you're, you know, what symptoms you're looking to uh, search or you know, what diseases you're looking to generate information on. I think these models can provide a much more focused answer. Uh, Scott, we're about out of time. Just very quickly, there's been this idea that the more information you have, the better it is. Would you agree that putting stuff like Reddit and X tweet, you know, tweets from X and all different kinds of things into something is better, or do you think sticking to medical journals and you know maybe other scientific-based things is a better way of going about it? What would you rather see as a physician? For medical applications, I think you're going to have to stick to authoritative information, and certainly for regulatory purposes. These things, when they become medical devices and they seek clearances for use cases like um, actual applications in patient care, FDA is going to regulate them based on the information that they're trained on.